see whether he or or others like him <coughs> would even mention Ethiopia. But otherwise, I think it's an interesting kind of summary and point out certain things. Was it 2012 or or 5940? What year is it? You know, where one speak about the millennium and certain eschatologies. I mentioned that before. The eschatologies are. It's another way of saying prophecies, except they use this another Latin phrase, eschatology, which in a sense means um, kind of abstractions, kind of on a certain level, the spiritual parts. Like, for example, um, what Yeshua fulfilled can be understood in an eschatological sense. It's like an abstract of, of, of prophecy, like we're the ones lost but now found in in. in ethnicity we as a as the black people especially those brought to this hemisphere but now other people can see their struggle in that struggle you know like everyone can be a so-called nigger or black even though some folks don't understand it because they still are trying to sweep under the rug um kufu evil kufat even of their own people so they don't really point to what i like about this production 2012 um, what does he call it? Nicholas uh, Arthur. Um, prophecy Reality. Across the border dot org. But this vid that we came across. 2012 or 5940. What year is it? We didn't download it. We might just download it. We didn't think that we would. You know, we thought we'd just listen to it, this Shabbat. And, you know, it was kind of interesting. And then as he got more into it, though, um, there's a couple of errors that we think were made, but it seems as though one was seeking is still seeking the truth. Remember when the Beta Israel, his 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 racial ethnic people, when they went astray, the real Beta Israel, the black people, the ones who no one looks to, or very few who have the veil over their eyes look to, um, he turned astray. Went astray, he turned to the Gentiles. Now, what's interesting about this is a couple of things. I'm just recording this to touch on a couple of things about what year is it. I think that's very important when you understand the whole Julian and Gregorian. And they try to dumb down our work and say that, well, the Ethiopian calendar just basically is the Julian calendar, basically. All right, there's nothing, nothing too big about that. It's the Julian calendar. But they say the devil's in the details, so we have to really get into the details. Then you find the deception, where a lot of people turn away from it. Now, most uh, careless Ethiopians, if you ask them what date is it, they'll tell you something like 2000 and, um, 2005. They'll say, oh, it's um, 2005. From an Ethiopian, Martin, careless, post um post great transgression uh, 74 75 Ethiopia um, they will say it's 2005 but truly it is 7505 now most of the Europeans and and who are into eschatology and, and biblical dispensationalism and prophecy well they just dismiss that out of hand they say no 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 that can't be it but the Jewish calendar says something like what 57 something 5700 and change um, and one thing that's good about this particular program here 55 5570 or something like that mm. most people say well why don't you know that you're talking about you being Jew but we're not one of those Jews you see what I'm saying you know we're one of the true you understand the half of the story that's being revealed so this is where the Ethiopia connection is very important to the calculation of time. So when we ask, what year is it really? Um, most in the messianic so-called movement, they would basically hold to the Jewish calendar. right? But then if you look at, if you start to do like Nicholas Arthur did in his um, 2012 or 5940, what year is it? He basically un unravels and unveils some of the basic information a lot of us are familiar with, but his presentation we find to be um, noteworthy. Therefore, we are making a note of the worthiness of you checking it out for yourself and, um, <clears throat> you know, doing the math and checking out the facts and doing the math. But what year is it really? Now, there's a couple of points here that are very interesting, and we might not be able to get into all of them right now, but this is like a highlight, like a heads up. Check this out for yourself. What year is it really? 
Now, there's a lot of dispensationalism. Now, we admit this. We like the word, but we don't like how the word is used. It's like the word evolution is a, is a good word, but the way it has been used into religion, a doctrine, a whole dogma, and everything like that. And so a lot of folks are seeking the truth, and they're getting caught up on what is established, what is believed by everybody around them. So suppose everybody around you is an idiot, or, or they don't know about this subject matter. Like when we speak about the Ethiopian calendar, a lot of folks just dismiss it and say, well, basically it's the Egyptian calendar, or basically it's the Julian calendar, or basically it's, basically it's anything else instead of checking it out. For us as Ethiopians, or faithful Ethiopians, not careless ones, but faithful Ethiopians, children of the Ethiopians, uh, B'nai Kushim and B'nai Yisrael, in, in spirit and in truth, right? Be'menfesina be'ilnet. We recognize that it's 7,505. But now, that now puts a lot of these um, European, Anglo, and Euro Jews and Anglo and Euro Christians, that put a lot of their data and their speculations into considerable amount of doubt. <clears throat> now, most careless would just discard their own ancientcy, their own... Um, divine heritage as many careless Ethiopians have done and other folks where they look at the Ethiopian evidence and say wow this is this is out of this world we can't accept this but if you notice a lot of their top scientists and experts and professors and universities are actively studying what happened to the Beta Israel of the of the East the, the tribe of Dan known as the Falashes or the Beta Israel of the East when they were airlifted, there were two planes. One plane had all the people in it. The other plane had all the books in it. When the planes landed, they carted away the books and the Ethiopian um, parchments and fragments and scriptures and scrolls and took it to the Hebrew universities and other universities. And they're being studied now diligently in, 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 in secret. Betesawara, you understand? And many of the Ethiopians have complained that instead they've been, you know, given... Um, you know, the Masoretic Babylonian um, Torah, the Masora. <clears throat> Jesus Christ spoke against the, the, the Masora on a certain level. Remember, that's the tradition. Masora means tradition. Go look it up. You understand? Masora. There was a town called Masora in the Bible. It was a place where books were made. You understand? And even the Kenites. Others speak about the Kenites. I wonder why they kept talking about the Kenites. Because other tribes came in and basically kept the records and books for Israel because they were in violation of the code, the covenant. They got lazy in the covenant. That's how we, our, our, our situation now as, as Jacob, as Black Jack, you understand? It's in the Black Jack. Either it's a 10 or it's 11 or it's a 1. Um, how, how do you calculate that? What is our situation as once lost but now found Beta Israel? And why biblical and prophetic Ethiopia is the key for we to even calculate what time is it really? Why did Julia, uh, Julius Caesar roughly around 47 or so, why did he upgrade his his calendar why did he present the calendar and, and did away with the old roman calendar which which dates itself from when the beginning of the city what city the city of rome the beginning of the urbane urbanus urbane mean means city in other words i and cain was a city builder he built the first city you understand? So they named their cities after their own names. All this is scriptural prophetic. So when we hear about the Pontifex Maximus, who is the Pontifex Maximus? Quite simply, he is the high priest of, of the Romanists. Mm -hmm. He's the high priest of the Romanist tradition. So ones like Nicholas Arthur, quite rightly, going through all the facts available that, that he receives, um, has come to the conclusion that you got to throw out the Romanist calendar, the A.D., B.C., all of that. you got to kind of throw that out. And you also got to throw out the so-called Jewish calendar. Because the Jewish calendar, at the heart of it, it changed dates and times because they wanted to um, deny that the Moshiach is Yeshua. You understand the Moshiach, Adonai, the Bain Ha Elohim. That's a true testimony. I know in his video he was like, well, Yeshua is the king. No, the king is his father. The king is Yeshua's father. Yeshua's father is the king of kings. Yes, they are one, of course. 
But in person, Yeshua is the Lord, the Adonai. That's why it says that Jesus is Lord. You know what I'm saying? That Yeshua is Adonai. And this is what the, the Jews, right, of that time, the first so-called century, wanted to deny. And after that, the Jewish traditions coming from the Council of Jamina in 90 AD, where they get a lease from Rome to practice Judaism in a, in a different form from the original ethnic or Beta Israel or Ethiopian Hebrew form of Judaism after many of the native tribes had fled after 70 AD. So we have a 20 year period after the, after the Roman um, destruction of Jerusalem or the Tisha B'Av, right? After that whole destruction right there, what happened? What happened was that many Israelites, native Israelites, black Ethiopian Hebrew Israelites were taken into slavery. Many were killed. Many of them fled. Some fled in, on, on the Arabian side. Some crossed over and, and fled on the Ethiopian side or the African side, the Egyptian side, Elephantine. Some went further south, Lake Tana, Ethiopia. Some went further south in the Lemba people. Some of them crossed the river. Prophecy of Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 9 and 10 from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia with the same rivers of Egypt. Remember within the rivers, the river Euphrates and the river of Egypt is that promised land that was given by Yahweh Eloheinu to the seed of Abraham according to Genesis chapter 15. What you see today going on over there is a beachfront property. It's like the beach. They're, they are fighting over the beach. That is the beach of our total promised land. And this is if you are staying in the Kal Kidan, in the, in the word, the Kal Kidan, in the logos of the Kidan, the logos of the covering. But if you're following men and people and a lot of latter-day, you know, latter-day um, ain'ts, you understand? If you're following the latter-day Christians, counterfeit Christianity, Caesar Borgias, or the reformist Christianity, which is Protestantism, that's the reformist Christianity. Like today, they talk about Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, and the reformist Judaism, so forth and so on. You're going to be confused. This is why everybody's talking about when is the millennium? I want to be in the millennium. And they're thinking that the scriptures, when it talks about the millennium, overstand. They think it's speaking about them. Mm -hmm. And many of us are thinking it's, it's speaking about us in the sense of that millennium. You understand? So therefore, the whole biblical prophetic timeline has been disturbed. Remember what it says in the, in the prophecy of Donnell? They will seek to change laws and times. Right? They would seek to change laws and times. Remember in the book of Donnell, it speaks to that. So the timeline is all screwy. Let's just say it like that. The timeline is all screwy. It's all inverted. It's all upside down. The only key that we have, the most important, the valuable key is the Ethiopic key. And this is why the same children of disobedience, the children of Cain, the Romanists, sought to destroy Ethiopia, fulfilling another, opening up another area of, um, opening up another area of uh, prophecy. You have a whole other area of prophecy being opened up right there. And, and this is what we talked about, Revelation chapter 12. But see, of course they dismiss it because they dismiss the, in other words, everything that is true has become false. Everything that black has become white. Everything up has become down. Everything south has become north. You understand? Everything African or Ethiopian has become European. So we have to understand how the whole flip mode has gone. This is why I was, I was, I was waiting with what one would say, being a little theatrical. I was waiting with bated breath to hear and to behold with my ears. If they would point out the, the Ethiopian calendar, but they didn't. They point out a lot of interesting ones. The Byzantine goes back 6,000 years. The Persians, I think, also go back about that far. But the Ethiopian calendar, let's note, let's note this. is 7,000, the proper, the true Ethiopian calendar. Because there's two forms. There's the one that they give to the outsiders so people don't ask a lot. Or, or it even confuses their own children because they think it's 2005. I mean, you know, like everything began just 2,000. No, no. It is, it is 7,505 years. Now, note, Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Messiah, was to be born from so-called creation 
at 5,500. But many would dismiss that because they say it's only 6,000 years old because they are forcing their ignorant Gentile Western misinterpretation and, and, and faulty perspective on the Bible. And they're saying that, well, it had to be 6,000 like Usher's um, calendar, which is the 4,004 that you see in your Bibles. That is faulty. Now, we have to utilize that on a certain level. Well, really, we have to study and show ourselves approved. When we study and show ourselves approved, a lot of things come to light, even about the millennium. And this is not a popular view because a lot of folks are looking forward to the millennium. So this one right here, Nicholas Arthur, he says that, well, the millennium is not going to be for a long time now. So one just good, should go and just live their life in Yeshua HaMoshiach. Well, I, I agree with that, that one should live their life in Yeshua HaMoshiach. In fact, if you're not living in Yeshua HaMoshiach, you're not really living life. You understand in spirit and in truth. So we agree with that right there. We are main that. However, though he has unraveled for himself and others a lot of areas of faulty biblical hermeneutics, whether it's the Christian, you, you, um, um, Ulysses, is it Ulysses, Usher, Usher, the Usher calendar which is the 4004 that we find in in most of the King James Bibles because it was accepted at that time. Remember, they shall think, they shall think, they shall think to change laws and times. Now, the reason why the Ethiopian calendar is closest to the Julian calendar is because um, Julius Caesar discovered enough. He discovered much when he was in Egypt. You understand? And when he was in that part of the world where the true black Jews and Christians were. You understand? And see, you don't see that today. The whole racial identity of the Middle East has been, um, um, can we say, screwed with? They've screwed with, you understand? They effed with the whole racial identity. Not to be vulgar or anything, but that's, that's how you have to understand it if you're going to re really receive you know, saying in quick time what really happened in quick succession. But I thought it was interesting. I think it's interesting 2012 or 5940. And we haven't finished watching his whole production right here because we got to a certain point. We had to say, pause it, hold, hold it right here. Let us speak on this right here. This is interesting. You know what I'm saying? Very interesting because we want to bring to light that many people think that the millennium is to happen. To them, you understand? They said that, well, Satan is going to be locked up for a thousand years. But now notice this. If you look at the European calendar, the Western and the Jewish, and you give them roughly 6,000 years or so, right? Right? Where some people say there's 60 more years, so forth and so on, right? And then you compare that. In other words, the Western calendar, the European calendar, the Anglo calendar is basically the Reformed the reformed um, European Christian calendar along with and powered by the European Jewish um, speculations. But then I don't know why they rely on the European Jewish speculation. They deep end on it, right? When the J European Jews deny Yeshua as the Moshiach, you know what I'm saying? And then they deny the Ethiopians who are Christian except if it's for racial reasons. So that means that they are some they're clean, yes, if they're Christians, but not all of them. As Yeshua HaMoshia would even be a witness and has borne witness. Now check this out right here. Many of them based on what occurs right here in um, Revelation chapter 5. Remember 5 and 5 where it says, Kashamagaliwochu, Andu, Atalikis, and Neho, Kayuhuda Negedi Yehono, and Besa, Ersum, Yedawit, Sir, Metzhafun. Then it goes on and says something very interesting. Let's move down right here where it speaks about um, um, verse 8, verse 9. It says, And when he had um, taken the book, and when he had taken the book, four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb. Goes on. Then 
yemola ba yemola betin yemola betin your work ka yazu it says it says having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints or or golden vials chalices they had chalices right full of odors it says all right full of odors you say no doubt the the kana besama were well lit were manifest to do so how do i'm like why else would they fight against that satan knows something whether the men and people know what satan know well you know there's no doubt that they don't know that you understand but they're being moved right out of racial and racist reasons so they can't even accept the humanity of yeshua hamushia yet it is so clear that they'll strain their eye at a gnat and swallow a camel of lies concerning what date is it right now you understand what is what is the date right now well if the ethiopian well we say it is true but let's just reason on this right for the sake of so-called argument right if it is true then that would mean that we're not moving into the seventh millennium as people have read in and interpreted or interpolated but we're actually moving into as the ethiopian the faithful ethiopian says the mitmanan as they say we're moving into the eighth millennium or the or the cement she but many can't overstand even among the ethiopians and explain it correctly because half of the story they have forgotten and that's the yehudi net you understand both sides have to come together you have to understand that you know the judeo and the christina you know or the luna and the solar the soul and the luna and that's exactly what the caesar period of time and the gregorian period of time did was that it it, it took out and then they put in the moon into that's where we get the months and moon blah 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 moonotheism but now look at this verse here this is what a lot of christians a lot of them we've been listening to some of the messianics and others talking about i can't wait to be in the millennium well i mean hey that's 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 a good hope and the whole left behind so-called crowd where a lot of people believe that and you see them now supporting that which is anti-christ or anti-moshiach right fulfilling what the bible says about the false prophets and they don't recognize that the false prophets that they are the false prophets of the false prophecy you understand this is why they want to rush to war with iran this is why because it's the demons that want to destroy humanity black white asian they don't really care you understand satan knows that they he she them have a little bit of time and they are seeking to push everything especially from a the religious spirit you know what i mean the religious and we say religious based on the 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 western interpretation of religion which means religio which goes back to roman tradition it holds to roman tradition that means if there's any truth out there to be found and the Romanists give it a thumbs down, they're going to not accept it. But verse 9 and 10 says this right here. Because verse 9 and 10 are together. It says, Metzhafun te wesed zen mach temochunim te feta zen yigabahal tar de halena bedemehima le egeziaviher kaneged hulu ka kwankwama hulu ka waganema hulu right it says here now notice the translation it says and they sung right and they sung Mm -hmm. It says, and they sung a new song saying, right? They sung, these saints sung a new song saying, these are Kedusan, sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book, right? To the Lamb and, and, and the Lion of Judah, right? And to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, Tardahalina, and hast redeemed us to, right? Redeemed us, right? redeemed us to god by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us 
right, to our God, kings and priests, and we, right, and we shall reign on the earth. Did you get that right there? We shall reign. Now notice this, it says, but mid the rim lie, ye negasalu iyalu. It says, and upon the earth they shall reign. So when you start to even notice certain areas of King James, and if you study it not from the, the Metaf Kedus, if that's too high for you, or from the Septuagint, you understand, and the available Texas Receptus, as they call it, the received text, you will find that King James tends to translate sometimes he, she, you understand, they, we, you know, in, in some interesting and, and, and cryptic ways, as though something was being covered up. You understand? It don't say, and we shall reign. You understand? It says, and they shall reign. And they shall reign. Now, it's interesting because most Christians will think that, well, this is the church right here. And speaking, it's about them in this time, 2012 or 2000 now. You know what I mean? Now, here's the interesting thing. What about those Kedusan from the first century? What about those Kedusan during the times of great tribulation. People say, well, but, but what about the millennium? The millennium, from all of our research so far, the millennium that a lot of folks have been led to believe that they're moving into has already happened, and that accounts for the thousand-year difference between the oldest calendars, whether it's Byzantium, Byzantium um, in Asia Minor, the Hittites, Turkey, or whether it is the, the Persian, even the, even the Chinese goes far back to 5,000 and something, similar to the Jewish, but not as far back as the Ethiopic calendar. Now, everyone dismisses, not everyone, but a lot of them dismiss the Ethiopic calendar because it puts into question this idea of the millennium. And the idea of the millennium is just like the Usher calendar. It is false and it is faulty. Even though we're not going to say that it was their intention to be false and faulty. They can only work and could only work with the, the, the Romanist um, information, the Roman Catholic information that was, that was, that was uh, trickled down to them. You have to remember that there was a big war in Europe, you understand, you know, over reading the Bible. And as one started to read the Bible, they recognized that the Pope and, and Rome is the seat of, of, of Antichrist, of the beast, of, 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 of the, the mystery woman of Babylon. Now, now what makes that different, any different today? And, it, and not if, but as that is so, doesn't that bring into better light and illumination both Moa and Besazem Negeta Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi, Haila Selase, Siyume Gaziab Hir Nugusa Negest, Ze Ethiopia. Doesn't that bring everything into better context in the invasion of Ethiopia? Now, people say, well, what about that millennium? <laughs> the, the first verse that the, that the brother here, the brother in the Mushia, uh, Nicholas Arthur, mentioned was where it says, A thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when this passed. I've often thought of this. Who's to tell, like, when you go to rest and you wake up? Or who's to, who's to know that if, if, if the Almighty had destroyed everything and brought it online again, how would we even know about it? You know, how would we even know about it? But here's the key. That all the calendars that exist, you understand, do not match the really correct biblical hermeneutic of the Ethiopian calendar. And the Ethiopian calendar has this thousand year. You remember there was this guy, Velikovsky, or one of them, um, some Russian scientist who had been looking at the Bible, and he'd been saying, suppose history had been rewritten, right? I mean, it's kind of obvious when you look at the dating that somewhere along the line, more than a thousand years, you understand, more than a thousand years is in some great way, especially in the West, is unaccounted for. So the real year that it is, even though we know a lot of folks will dismiss it, but the real year as of this year is 7,000 and the present time, 7,000, the Shabbat of, of, of October 20th, 2012, is it's 7,505. Now this, this matches the testimony of Adam and Eve, the Gedala Adam. Where Haywan against Satan, and it was the contention, the struggle 
right? The, the, um, the conflict of Adam and Eve, what's often been translated in, in um, what's that book called? Uh, Forgotten Books of the Lost Books of the Bible and Forgotten Books of Eden. And, and that book is an Ethiopic, or at least it's translated from Ethiopic sources, but they always try to suppress that. I mean, whoa, what a, what a wicked web Satan has woven for them, that racism, that, that, that white supremacy, that they can't even see the facts because they're going to reject it because it's black. You know, if anything, they should repent of is that. See, they don't recognize when we talk about the, that the Moshiach is black. And they have to receive it in spirit and in truth. They're like, we can receive it spiritually for our healing and our prosperity. But we cannot receive that he is black. Well, woe is you. I'm not going to even say what sort of judgment. But woe to that because you're not receiving the, the fullness. You understand? The half that you don't know is where you're being fooled from the fullness. And it's going to become, begin to become evident more and more as ones begin to ask, wait, 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 wait. All this Bible prophecy and hermeneutics that we have learned from a Western Gentile perspective. Something, where is the millennium? Because according to them, we should be in the millennium right now. According to them, Satan should have been bound right now. You know, was, but see, His Majesty gives us that, that hint, that key, that fitchy. May 5th, 1941. Where he says that the godless and the cruel dragon has newly risen his head and is persecuting humanity May 5th. Let's think about that date. Let's think about what happened in 2000. The, the syzygy, the, the, the erection of the grand cross within the sky where, the, where, where heaven sent a sign. Where the sign of who? Must be the sign of the son of man. You understand? The sign of the son of man in the heavens. A, a, a grand cross, the cross. We already know that the cross, what the cross is, the true Christian who receive it in spirit and in truth. Not just as an idol, you understand? But many of the Romanists and the Europeans, you have to understand where they're coming from. But it's the Almighty who turned away from his ethnic, his ethnic people, the majority of the lost sheeple. Who would end up in the transatlantic slave trade, the Ethiopic Ocean slave trade, and be scattered throughout the world? But yet a remnant in the Afri African Zion, Africa, Sion, was left for for a testimony. He said that they would never lack a man to do what to sit upon his throne. That's why it's not called the kingdom of Israel today. It's called the state of Israel. It wasn't Yahweh who gave it, but it was a lot of. Um, you know, political wranglings and, and deals, bow for decoration and other sort of um, arm twisting and everything else. Because originally they wanted to establish a Jewish, uh, a, Jew, a European Jewish community in Uganda. What? In Uganda? Why in Uganda? Do, do they know something they're not telling anyone? Think about that. Well, you should know it too if you're reading Genesis without a racist and a racialist um, misconception. You know, think you see right there in the Garden of Eden and, and in the early book, you see Ethiopia is mentioned before. We don't see no Rome. We don't see no America. We don't see no Europe. We don't even see Israel, whether the state or the kingdom at that time. But we see Ethiopia. You understand what it says? The first shall be last and the last first. So if I says, oh, it can't be Ethiopia. It can't be black people. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, wasn't that what they asked before? And, and, and how the first century Jews denied, by and large, Yeshua HaMoshiach, the same way that the latter-day Christians deny Kedemawi Haile Selassie and deny the Ethiopian testimony. Not all, but unfortunately too many by and large. You understand? And prophecy is continuing to unfold. You understand? This is all part of that grace, part of that mercy time. You overs and where are we headed? Are we headed to a rapture? A lot of people believe that there's going to be a rapture. You understand? And we're not going to say that there's not a rapture, but what do you mean? And according to whose misinterpretation or interpolation? You overs and 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 are you looking at original primary sources and and resources like the Ethiopic, or do you reject that? Because you say, oh, it's not. The count. How how could they be? Notice what the papal testimony is. And we have a book, actually, that we advise ones who want to study a little bit more. Uh, and this was when the Protestants had looked at Ethiopia 
um, um, Straight Whaley. And it's the, the Church uh, History of Ethiopia by Michael Geddes from 16, I think, 95 or so. You know what I'm saying? It's written in kind of the old English style, but it's very easy to read once you recognize that they wrote, you know, the, the, the F's and the S's in this way. And, and, and you get over that, but it's a very interesting read because it testifies to both what the, the last, the last um, opportunity for Protestantism for the church of Sardis to redeem itself was lost. And what do we mean by the, by the church of um, Sardis? Well, we have to go to chapter 3. I think it's chapter 3 of uh, Revelation. And chapter 3 of Revelation is talking about um, what we know as the Protestantism, the rise of like Martin Luther and the Protestantism where it says to the church of the, the the angel of the church in Sardis write these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of god and the seven stars i know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead and art dead you know what I'm this is speaking to the roman what is known as the the um the the, the breakaway from the roman catholic church that martin luther and lutherism Right. That's why it's interesting that our father would give a testimony. They say, don't call no man father on earth. You are right on earth. But in the kingdom of heaven, you know what I'm saying? We know who we are as brothers and sisters and mothers. And we know our father and we know our new name. So the message to Sardis is the period of reformations. And there was a faithful remnant. Right, like those who were responsible for the basic translation of these books, the King James Bible, but moreover, um, William Tyndall and others who were martyred. But let's read on where it says in Kuter Hulet of chapter 3 of Revelation, it says, um, it says, uh, Serahin Baamlake Fita Fitzum Hono, Alagen Yehutimna, Yeneka Hun, Lia Motum, Yalachuin. Right? right? Notice it says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. In other words, the European Protestant Reformation was good. It was, in a sense, it had the potential to be very good, but it was not perfect before God. You know what, what crept in? All that racist shit, right? That, that's basically what what occurred, you know. All that racist stuff, and this book here, the Church History of um, the Church History of of Ethiopia, wherein, among other things, the two great splendid Roman missions into that empire are placed in their true light to which are added the epitome of the Dominican history of that church and an account of the practices and conviction of Maria of the Annunciation, the famous nun of Lisbon, right? It was composed by Michael Geddes, D.D., I think it's Doctor of Divinity, Chancellor of the Cathedral Church of Sarum, right? And this is... Um, from um, 18, uh, 1696, actually 1696. Now what's interesting is a testimony of when the Romanists first came in to Ethiopia during the time roughly at 1530. 1530 is a, is, a, is, a, is a good year, you understand, to a lot of things co coincide and correspond in that particular year. It's like an epic year for I-9, 1530. And um, their testimonies of Ethiopia, because see, they went there to bring all churches. See, they recognized that they was not ruling everyone, that there was a remnant, right, in the highlands of Ethiopia. Now, here we have the, um, the how would we call this, the, the fifth church leading way to the sixth church. We have Sardis, or the Ro or, or the 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 Britain, Great Britannia, the Germans, um, the German princes, uh, Martin Luther, and then it goes forward to Great Britannia, and that's the Reformations in Europe. 
that's the rebellion against the Pope, the Catholic authority, where one start to read the Bible and learn of the gospel of grace instead of the gospel of works. And they're breaking from that. So when we look at Sardis here in chapter 3, well, this helps us with a timeline and prophetically, not just the number of the, either the literal number on these counterfeit calendars, right? But really in the sense of prophecy. And then when we get to Philadelphia, this is, this is coming into Ethiopia. This is now Ethiopia once again reemerging from that period of isolation. Just like we find in chapter, in chapter 11, is it chapter, no, chapter 12, where it speaks about the woman getting wings, two great wings of an eagle. Remember, the diaspora went into Egypt. Some of the diaspora that fled from 70 AD, that there was a community in elephant time right and how they move forward and it's clear from a lot of the research is that they either were of the judaic or of the christian the ark christianity that there was an ark you understand that the ark of the covenant was important for their their worship or those tabot christina and that's very judaic right there but that would move further south because we look at the history of what went on in egypt and the different powers that came in Assyrian, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Ottoman, Turkish, the Mohammedans, uh, the, the, the Greeks, the Romans, all of that. You know, was, that pushed a lot of the people further and further down towards Nubia and others even into the highlands of Ethiopia. You know, was, this is why we have these cryptic verses you know, saying in the scripture, but once we have things in the proper alignment, the, the word reveals itself. So here the Almighty Father Yeshua is saying that he has found that their works were not perfect. And Michael Geddes, um, the church history of Ethiopia, has this one brother, this Christian brother Michael Geddes, appealing for the, the, the British church, which was still in opposition to the Roman church, to take an example from the Ethiopian church and to support the Ethiopian church. I can't tell you how many missionaries that went to Ethiopia and that were writing to the Europeans, whether in England, and saying, we need to support the Ethiopian Tawahedo Beta Christian. We need to support the Ethiopian church. It is a true branch of Christina, and it's been resisting the Romanists, it's been resisting the Mohammedans, the Islamo fascists, and we need to support them. But their words fell on deaf ears. This is one of the most shocking and interesting things I've found in some of my recent studies when I look looking at some of the, the books of like the missionaries. I look up whatever Abyssinia, Ethiopia, and the Google Books is a great aid. And there's other um, webs and, and browsers and sources and things out there on the Internet. You can, you know, go look them up. And um, in some of them, I found myself reading them. And reading some of the heartfelt appeals of some of the missionaries and others, um, even James Bruce makes an appeal. Uh, several appeals in, in his in his 11, 12 volume series to the source of, of the now. Remember, the Europeans only got there, right, roughly in the 1800s. Remember, the church, Roman church received this deadly wound circa 1790, 1798. And the, and the Romanists only found out where Ethiopia was or, or where the true Davidic kingdom was, where this Prester John king was, right, um, in um, 1530. They did not know. So we have Ethiopia for almost, this is what's interesting, for almost a period of 1,500 years. Now look at the calendar for a moment. If we take 1,500 years, right, from the 7505, we would have 2005, right, which is this 2012. We already showed before how the very date, December 21st, 2012, was also prophesied of, or we can say pointed to, right, in a prophetic sense in um, the Gedala Adam or the testimony, the, the testament of Adam and Eve. And you, can, you have a very pretty decent translation in the lost books of the Bible, the forgotten books of Eden. And it mentioned the month of Toxus. You understand? And there's other testimonies. Now we have this on another layer, another era. What is for time and time and a half a time? Could that be the 500 years? 
you over so what we have right here is where where Yeshua the spur of Yeshua was speaking to the to the Protestant church right here in in chapter 3 at verse 3 it says in Gedi in date in the Tekebel in the Semah Asib Nisham Gibba in Gadias Bataneka in the Leiba Emeta Bahalo Bemanacho Wima Saat in the Metabe Kato Atawkem Atawkem. Right? It says, Remember, therefore, speaking to the head, the British church, the Romanists, but to the European Protestants. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. You understand? Know repent because even there, though they were trying not to be a slave to the Roman, the pomp, the, the Pontifus Maximus and, and to the Roman, the, the, the Catholic Church, many of them were beginning to explore um, enslaving black people and African people and the lost sheep, not knowing that they were fulfilling another aspect of prophecy you understand but but they didn't have to be the ones they could have listened to this word to remember how they have received and heard but instead of saying that well these black people didn't get the opportunity to hear the gospel here and there in Africa they said they must have been uncivilized you understand they must be lesser beings that's why it says remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent have a change of heart a change of mind if therefore thou shalt not watch if you're not going to be awake and aware right I will come on thee as a thief and we see now Nugus Neges Kedamawi Haila Salase and this 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 elect the elect of God right coming upon them as a thief they still act like they don't know I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. And they did not know the hour of their visitation. Right? They did not know the hour of their visitation. Verse 4 says, Negergin libsachawin yala rekesu besardesa tikita sawoch ka antegar alu. Yetegabachawim asilehonu nech ellips lebso. It says, Thou hast a few names even in Sardis. What? A few names. We can name a few of them. M maybe Martin Luther. You understand? Um, William um, um, Tyndall. You know, that's a couple right there. A few, a few. And Michael Geddes, uh, the author of the Church History of Ethiopia. You need to check it out. You really need to, because it will add the fullness to this. Right now, it says that thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. What is the garment of Christian? It is Christ, putting on Christ. That although they spoke about grace and all of this and forgiveness of sins, how did they treat the African? How did they treat other peoples who they came across who, like them, didn't have the opportunity because they didn't have a Bible? They didn't get a chance to read it. How did they hear the Bible? By people forcing Christianity on them, but instead, you know, it's like they say they came and brought the Bible and stole people's lands, right? And so and stole people, right? Which is a violation right there of the scripture too. Right? So it says, and they shall walk with me, those who haven't defiled their garments in white, not in white supremacy. You see, that's how the foolish, the foolishness of the Gentiles have deceived them. You understand? In white, in the spiritual purity. For they are worthy. Right? For they are worthy. And here it says in verse 5, it says, He that overcometh dil ye nesau, in dihu benech lips ye gwenatzefal, simunim kahiwet metzhaf ala demesisim, be abatena be mela ekutum fit le simu. Emesakur letalo. Right? Emesakur letalo. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Right? In white raiment. And I will not blot out his name, his name, out of the book of life. It was through my eternal life. But I will confess his name before my father. 
right? And before his angels. Mm -hmm. Then it concludes here before it, it now comes into Ethiopia. Now Ethiopia is rising. The church of Ethiopia. Here's what we have to recognize historically, right? And Michael Getty's uh, 1696 book is very interesting because it's talking about it's still in the time of what's going on just before the Romanist church gets its deadly wound. Right, just before that deadly wound came on the Romanist church. You know when that, that wound was, was healed? Right? In nineteen twenty nine. One year after Ras Teferi became Nagus Teferi upon the throne of David, and one year before he became Nagus Negest Ze Ethiopia. That's why it says Menfest La La Abiate Christianat. Yemilowin Joro, Yalo, Yisma. He that hath an ear, make him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So this is a spiritual message. Those who are unspiritual, the natural people who are working with natural racism, you understand? Who are working with the, the natural chatiat, right? Don't get this. But now we enter in and Ethiopia comes into the picture. So when we ask, what year is it really, right? It's 7,505. Now here in verse 7 of um, Revelation chapter 3, just to connect this with Negus Neges, Ketamawi, Haile Selassie, and Ethiopia, and, and Amos 9 and 7, and all those other prophetic places of scripture, including um, um, Zechariah, is it Zechariah, Zephaniah 2 and 12, including that for the careless Ethiopians, yes. But here it says, Bethlehem, um, be, um, fila, fila, dila, fiam, wadalo, wada, beta, christian, melak, indibele, saf, ye dawita, mekfecha, yalo, ye mia, kafit, ye mia, zegam, ye lele, ye mi, zega, ye mia, kaftim, ye lele, kedusina, il netenya, ye hono, ursu, it says, and to the angel, right, to the angel in uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, right, and Philadelphia means brotherly love, the love of the Wendemoch. Mm -hmm. That's what his imperial majesty, Kedamawi Hala Selassie, a testimony, God's sign, Ha Elohim, Ha Shem sign of that brotherly love. What does it say? These things saith he that is what? Kedus. Abba. He that is true. He that is Eunetenya. Eunet Eunet Elachichwalo. He that hath the key of David, of DVD, of Dawit, of the well beloved. He that does what? That openeth, prophecy being opened up, and no man shutteth. No man can shut it. And he shutteth for a time, right? And no man openeth. Right? Remember, he is sovereign. This is the sovereignty of Negus and Neges, the sovereignty of the King of Kings. You know what I'm saying? He does that which he pleases. Amen? Amen. And so it goes on to say, which is interesting, because it says, uh, Li zagao aichilim Chayli Minim tenish bihon Kalein Teba kahalina Semenim Ala kadihimna Ala kadihimna I know thy works He's speaking now to the sixth church Right? And this is speaking to the The, the, the true oriental churches the, the churches that compose the branch that is in the dingles in the maiden's hand as above so below so when we look at virgo or the dingle you understand the alma she's holding a branch in her hand right the, the some say that's a netzer in the hebrew the netzer she's holding a branch and that branch has five stars and remember there were five churches that refused to bow to the romanist madness to the romanist apostasy and including those five oriental churches is the ethiopic church or the ethiopian tawahedo church now called the ethiopian orthodox tawahedo church you understand but now here's what it says and this is all concerning the visitation of the king of kings it says in the whole 
Behold, look and see, Ihud Saihonu, Ihud Nen, Kamilu Negergin, Kamiwashu, Kasaitan Machiber, and Andochin, Iset Ahalo, and Neho, Metto, Be Igroche Hifit, Yesegdu Zen, in name and Wadded, 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 who? Yauku, Zen, Adar Gachualo. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, because Satan Machiber, the congregation of Satan, the gathering of Satan, right? And this more, uh, it's not the so-called, just the converted, it's not speaking of converted Jews who are faithful, it's speaking about a lot of those who just use the Jew-Jew thing to stop ones from telling the truth, right? About who, you know, these like the Rothschild Jews, right? Um, which say they are Jews. They say they are Jews, right? I would then, Camilo, you understand? I would say, you understand? But do lie, Camilo, wash you, right? Behold, look and see, right? And neho, look, here it is. Here's the vision, here's the fulfillment. I will make them to do what? To come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee you see the conquering line of the tribe of Judah Moa and Bessas and M Negeta Yehuda you understand the tribe of Judah not one who was converted to Judaism but we're talking about the tribe of Judah that means the people of Yehuda and what does it say to I and I it says here it says yeah to get stand Kal Salat Abeke in a deck mobile midder Yemino Rutin Ye fetanacho zen, be alem hulu lai, li met a kalo ka fetanao sa art, it abik a halo, because thou hast kept the what? The word. The word of what? My patience. Yeah, to egishtein kal. I will also keep thee from the what? The hour ka fetanao sa art. I will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world and just a portion just one area just over there in the middle east no all the world you know what I'm saying? to try them to try them as you try silver or gold or anything that somebody says precious precious no camilu you understand know so you have to try it and find out whether kahone saihonu you understand know find out whether it is or it isn't Right, and notice what it says in Kuta Asara'an. It says, Behold, and that whole look and see, these are things that are going to become and have been manifest and are being manifest. Tolo biye imetalo. I come quickly. Manim akalilihin in daya wasidabi yalehin as in the te yaz. Right? Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast. Hold that firmly. Grab it. Seize it. Take it. You understand? Which thou hast. That no man take thy crown. That no man takes your akalil. You understand? You, you, you understand? When you look up that word, how Hawaii Paolo says, you know, this is a this is the fight, the, the, the good fight, the fight of faith. It's like a race. You understand? And, and one's race for that crown. But this is a crown speaking in metaphoric terms. You understand the crown of ever living life. You understand? And I've heard older time folks say that your head, don't use your head for a hat rack. You understand? But the head, you know, this is, is the Ras, is, is the Mushiach, Yeshua. The Ras is Christos Jesus. That's why it says this right here now that brings Ras the Ferry revelation to the fulfillment. We're not saying that. Every aspect of it has been revealed to I and I, but this is being revealed to I and I. We share it with you. Freely receive, freely give. It says, Dil ye neshaw be amlake mekades amd in dihon adar gewalo. What a fitim a kazia kato ay wet am. Ye amlake na simina, ye amlake na katamasim, amalet. Kasamaya kaamla ke zen ye mita warda win adisi tu adisi tun iaru salemin adisi adi sunim semain ba arsulai sifalo sifalo right it says uh, him that overcometh dil yenashau nesa Yahweh nesi 
right? Egeziavihara alamaye, right? Him that overcometh, you understand? Will I make a what? A pillar, an armed, right? A pillar, right? In the what? In the temple, or really more correctly, the Mekdes, the holy place, the holy space. A pillar in the holy place of Elohe, of Elohe, of my God. Right? When we say Elohe, Elohe, they say he's calling upon Elijah. Upon Elijah. So he's going upon Elijah. But look at what Elijah's name is. Elijah, right? The other way, left to right, right to left, is Hila. Right? He's calling upon the Father. You understand? Because literally, uh, Eliyahu, right, means my power is Yah, is he who be. My power is he who be, who has the po power of becoming. He's the one who is who he is, right? His divine majesty, and he shall go no more out. I what, uh, kato I what, uh, and I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of my God, Yamla Kena Simna. Right, the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, Yamla Kena Katama Sim, which is right, Malet. That is to say, right, that is to say, the Adis Adisitun Adisitun Jerusalem, the Adisitun Jerusalem, the New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven. Kasamai is coming from. Heaven from who? From where? From Amlake, from my source. Or in the Hebrew, Elohe. Elohe, Elohe. Right? Elohe, Elohe, Lama Sabak Atani. Right? What Yeshua HaMoshiach said in opening up that stargate and letting his soul, returning his soul into the Father's hand, his spirit, right? Into the Father's hand. Right? Into, and the hand is his sign. Overstand. Which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So who is speaking here? Right? Let's ask who is who is speaking here? You understand it says Menfes la Abiata Christianat Yemilo win Joro Yalo Yisma. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Right? So once again we have to have a spiritual cognition a spiritual um, ability to receive so I know this kind of went a little bit maybe away from our original uh, um, topic right here of um, what year is it really but some points mentioned here in this particular 2012 or or 5940 what year is it really we thought since one didn't know that we should at least give our answer and there's other um, facts and, and factors and, and, and prophetic revelation that is very clear to see that's, that's history now. You understand? We can look at that history, even the whole thing about the, um, the millennium. Some say that the millennium has already happened. A lot of folks don't want to believe that. Mm -hmm. Because if they were to believe that the millennium has already happened, that we're going into a millennium, but it's not the millennium that they think is the millennium. You, you know what I'm saying? Because what they're forgetting is that before they became Christian, before they accepted the gospel or Christ or Jesus, that there were already others from before who really put out the blood, sweat, and tears that the Bible is telling us that the martyrs before us. Now, from a Gentile European perspective, why don't they have any knowledge of it? They have very little knowledge of it because those who were martyred were what we would call today Ethiopian, Hebrews, black people and and because they 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 have this kind of um this this faulty paradigm that has been set up it's very hard for them even the most sincere of them to really receive it at first but if they study it and if they really ask for for the spirit of truth and for wisdom and wherever the facts lead them even a lot of a lot of them are pointing to the Kibr Negest a little bit more now. They're pointing to um, the book of Enoch. A lot of them have done big studies on it. You understand? But what they try to do is fool you and say that the reverse engineered Hebrew version is really more authentic even though it was reverse engineered from the Ethiopic. And, we, and we've seen the documents on this. It's out there. So what they're probably trying to do is take the Falasha manuscripts and do a little more reverse engineering 
you know, we're saying on it. Then they present, hey, you know, we just found something new. And there's been a lot of counterfeit and fakes over there in the state of Israel. I mean, there's, uh, there's a, the whole program, I think, we saw elsewhere on that. So um, the year is 7505. As of this recording, October 20th, 2012, the Yovasan and Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. Um, we say that because, um, you know, the evening time is coming in. So now we're going into the first, the Ehud, what, 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 what they call in the West Sunday, but we call it Ehud because Ehud basically means first. Now, when they talk about, well, the days were switched and everything, but there was a baseline. You see, that's why most folks find it so hard to believe that the Sabbath is the Sabbath and so forth and so on. Because from the Western Gentile, they ignore what was the reference point that Julius Caesar or the Caesarians, you understand, were looking at. What is the reference point that the Caesarians or Caesar was looking at? And that whole story about Cleopatra and stuff like that, there's a lot that's there, but you have to, first of all, get the context of the true history and perspective. And then when you look at that, this is, that, that, that could be a whole other, uh, other, other teaching on, 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 on the Cleopatra movie and the whole story as it's been given to us. And also the Ring of Power presents some interesting information um, as well there because there's a whole biblical overlap because you have to remember that a lot of the romans they were black romans a lot of folks don't want to recognize they were black greeks and black romans well before the the hellenistic time and among the greeks and well before the um the um what they call it um the the etruscans the etruscans were known to be black peoples the rape of the sabians is nothing other than the rape of sheba or the rape of the blacks, the rape of Ethiopia, and the rape of, you could say, Ethiopia, in, in, in that greater sense of Ethiopia, when we speak about the empire, when we speak speaking continentally, you understand? And those things are right there in your face, but one's, you know, it's like uh, eyes wide shut. They see these things, but they act like they really don't see it. So this is just a little something to answer, um, point out what year is it really? Mm-hmm. And it's significant that it's 7505, and this is 2012, from all that we know about the heavens. This is a, this is a particular point in the heavens. Whether ones want to say Mayan or this one or that one, there is those who have studied the heavens. It's like the heavens is a clock. We know that from Genesis 1 and 14. The heavens is a clock. And if we look at the heavens and are, par are properly able to interpret Right, according to the, the true interpretation, which is Afro Shemitic, then we will recognize exactly what this time, what the season, and, and, and prophetically, then we can recognize what's the reason for the season. So, I'm gonna get more into this what year is it? You understand? Very kind of interesting. I know we had it on pause for almost an hour right now as we record this because we, we've heard some things, not to get into point by point and everything like that. Because we think that the one who presented this, Nicholas Arthur, is pretty um, um, sincere from where they're coming from. But we also recognize the Holy Spirit that a lot of the Europeans, they find it hard to accept anything that's not European. It's like this, it's a part of what has happened to them. Because from their calendar, they, they're missing a thousand years. You understand? And there's an important reason for that missing thousand years that the Ethiopian calendar and other ancient calendars also testify to but then you can notice that the Ethiopian calendar tends I think it's probably the longest time frame of all of them even though people are finding other ones and adding other kind of years you understand but it's a particular point that we are charting to so a little bit more on that and we need to check out Ethiopia kingdom of, of, of God services because he might have the new calendar hopefully on there for for this cycle from 2012 into 20 and into 2013 or 7505 into 7506 uh, and some of our ethiopian documentation actually points to this window we're in this eight seven eight years right now where there's going to be some interesting right some interesting um times because when we look at the ethiopian um, calculation it seems to I wouldn't say end but if we say the Mayan calendar end because that's the last facts that they found then we can say that the Ethiopic calendar seems to 
also end or fulfill. Remember the fulfillment, the alem fitzame. You understand the fulfillment of this age, of this world age. We're living in world ages, and this world age is coming to a fulfillment. And how do we say so? Because the heavenly clock, which they are not able to do anything about, they can't do anything. That's why they have bright lights to keep you um, distracted. You understand? And talk about what's going on and keep you in this uh, ring around the rosy holiday, holiday season so that you never really get to recognize how late the hour is and repent before it's too late to receive the half of the story concerning the King of Kings and his Christ before it's too late. And just remember these words here from Yeshua HaMoshiach and in Matthew, Mateos, Caduceus, Mateos, when the girl, uh, Caduce, he was a Caduce too. It's not who the Pope makes is Caduce. It is who receives the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit makes one Caduce. And there's a testimony in their life. It says here, In Gadi, he do na ahzabin hulu, bea be waladina be menfesu Caduce a sim, iat emek, uh, iat emek at chihuacho. Yazeza huacha hunim or hulu in the at Abuku, Iasa tamaracha huacho, dek amazamorit at the Ruacho, in the home, in a iska alem fitsame the rest, hulgize, kanante garning. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, teach all the Goyim, teach all the Gentiles. You understand both to the Jews, the black Hebrews, and the Gentiles, baptizing them in the name of of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I, the I there is Adonai, Adonenu Yeshua HaMoshiach, have commanded you that whatever he has commanded us in the Wengel, in the, in the gospel, in the word, right? That's what we are to teach them to observe those things. And lo, look and see, I am with you always. So he's always with us. We're not looking for him to re return or to come back in that Gentile misunderstanding. But we're looking for his unveiling. Right? And when he's unveiling the heavens, the earth, all the mountains flee. Think about that. I am with you always, but he's with us. So we have been delivered and rescued from that wrath. If we remain in him and him in us. Even to the end of the Alam. Even to the end of this particular world age, which uh, according to much that we have studied would be the third, it would be considered to be the, no, no, second world age. We're going into the third world. Ain't that something? We're going into the third world. And they've been fighting against the third world. You know what I'm saying? That's why they try to make you believe the new world order is coming. But actually, the true new world order is Yeshua's new world order. The Moshiach's new world order. It's not their new world order. And, and Christianoch and true Christians out there need to start preaching that and stop talking like the, like the, the, the heathen do, the, spiritual, um, the spiritually deceived do. You understand? In other words, because you're talking your faith. If, you know, saying you have faith in Yeshua, you're born again, all this, and you're talking like the devil has everything all wrapped up. He doesn't. You understand it's very clear. So you have to, you know, word, sound, and power is very, very important. You understand, um, as it says in the scriptures, and we, we, we might sum up right here from where we were um, previously in the earlier part of, um, oh, life and, what's his life and death, or death and life. It says right here, Proverbs 18.21 it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. But if you check out that word power of the tongue, you're going to find something very, very interesting right here. And, and I would like you to look at the word program or go to the Blue Letter Bible online and then look at the key words there. If you look at um, and in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, the word power means yod. Is in the yod. Right? Yad. Yad is is what is known as the 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 open hand. The open hand indicates power, chayil or dudamus, means direction, etc. In distinction from the thirty seven zero seven. Right? Well, what's the thirty seven zero seven pray tell? You understand? Well let's click on it. 
Let's find out what this word means right here. That's kaf, the kaf, right? The ka, the ka, the fidel ka, right? The kaf is open hand. The kaf is open hand, all right? And the yad is closed hand, right? The kaf, or also right hand too, closed right hand. Life and life, or death and life, right? Are in the, are in the power, right? The yod of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You know what I'm saying? So if you love death, right, then you speak to death, right? You speak to death according to the power of the yod, right? The yod is used in a great variety of applications, both literally and figuratively. Both proximate, that means nearby and remote. Right, and when you look at the uses in the King James, it's just too numerous to go into all the detail here. But definitely look it up. You know, saying look it up for yourself. Now, when we look it up in the Amharic, what's interesting, right? When we look it up in the Amharic, let's go to 1821. We wanted to teach on word, sound, and power. This is where um, word, sound, and power, uh, a good teaching on it would would begin. 18 and um, 18 and 21 of uh, Metzhafe Misale or Mishle in the, in, the, in the Masoretic Hebrew, but in the Ethiopic, we can tell, well, that's a correct translation right there from the Masora. It says, Motena Hiwet Be Melas Ij Nacho Yemiya Wedadu Atim Fere Wan Yebelalu Yebelalu Yebelalu, right? Yebelalu, ye 